Archaeologists say writings on an ancient tablet confirmed there was a global flood and an ark that carried animals. A group of Chinese explorers say they found Noah's famed boat, and Sydney siders will be among the first to see inside. In the rugged territory of eastern Turkey, settled amidst the towering top of Mount Ararat, lies a site covered in mystery and intrigue. For centuries, explorers, archaeologists, and believers have been captivated by the mysterious story of Noah's Ark. And now, reports have emerged that this ancient Ark has just been discovered in Turkey, and its components being uncovered for the first time ever. What shocking artifacts and mysteries have been discovered inside Noah's Ark in Turkey? Join us as we unravel what they discovered inside Noah's Ark in Turkey that scares the whole world. The Lost Ark The world is full of speculation and intrigue as attention turns to a remarkable discovery happening at the Darupinar Formation in Turkey. Here, situated amidst the rugged landscape, a team of fearless researchers from Turkish and American colleges, known as the Mount Ararat and Noah's Ark Research Team, carefully excavates the earth, revealing clues that may shed light on one of history's most enduring mysteries. For centuries, local stories have hinted at the possibility that this site, mainly composed of limonite rock, may hold the leftovers of Noah's Ark, a legendary vessel immortalized in the sacred texts of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Measuring approximately 515 feet in length, 85 feet in width, and 49 feet in height, by American standards, the site captivates the imagination with its intriguing shape and size. The artifacts seen at Darupinar paint a clear picture of a bygone era, dating back to between 5500 and 3000 BC. Among the things seen are traces of clay-like substances, marine skeletons, and remnants of ancient seafood, hinting at a bustling civilization that once thrived in this region. Such findings fuel speculation that it may indeed hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of Noah's Ark. Over the centuries, numerous expeditions have ventured to Mount Ararat in search of the celebrated Ark, yielding tantalizing clues but ultimately leaving the truth hidden in uncertainty. The quest for real proof has been a troublesome one, marked by conflicting accounts and inconclusive evidence. Yet, the recent discoveries at Darupinar inject fresh ability into the age-old quest for Noah's Ark. Collaborative efforts, bolstered by advancements in technology, offer tantalizing glimpses into the past, hinting at a possible link to the biblical flood narrative. However, caution prevails among scholars and scientists who advocate for thorough investigation and careful findings before drawing definitive conclusions. As the sun sets over the outlook, casting a delicate brightness upon the landscape, the mysterious shadow of the Ark stands as a silent witness to the mysteries of time. In its shadow, whispers of ancient secrets signal to those who dare to listen, inviting them to embark on a journey of discovery that transcends the boundaries of history and legend. Now, let's head over to Kentucky where the unimaginable is unfolding. The Ark Encounter In a private region of Kentucky, an extraordinary endeavor is underway, captivating the imaginations of visitors far and wide. Spearheading this ambitious project is a man named Ken Ham, a visionary who controlled a group known as Answers in Genesis. Their ambitious undertaking? None other than the creation of a theme park like no other, the Ark Encounter. But make no mistake, this is no ordinary theme park. At its heart lies a huge image of Noah's Ark, stretching across a vast expanse of 800 acres, surpassing even the famed Disneyland in scale. Each year, a crowd of curious souls, numbering around 1.5 million, flock to this sanctuary nestled in northern Kentucky, eager to partake in its wonders. The Ark itself stands as a proof to modern engineering marvels, Carefully crafted to mirror the dimensions described in the Bible, a staggering 510 feet in length, 85 feet in width, and towering to a height of 51 feet. Within its territory, 
visitors embark on a journey through time, passing over three captivating levels adorned with complicated displays that transport them to the era of Noah. These displays offer a quick look into a world before the flood, the daily life within the ark, and the aftermath of the disastrous flood, transforming the timeless tale into a tangible, clear experience. Ken Ham's ambitions for the Ark Encounter know no bounds. With grand plans for expansion, he pictured the addition of iconic structures such as the Tower of Babel and a recreation of ancient Jerusalem during the time of Jesus. The prospect of a Tower of Babel ride relating to the thrills of Disney's haunted mansion promises to ignite the senses and stir the imagination. But the Ark Encounter is not merely an attraction. It is a living, advanced entity. Each passing year brings new wonders, from interactive animal encounters to enchanting Christmas light displays and captivating buildings where visitors can stroll under the wings of birds. Behind the scenes, launched efforts in hydroponics demonstrate a commitment to sustainability, while accommodations ensure that staff members can fulfill their roles with ease. However, the journey to bring the Ark Encounter to realization has been challenging. Financial obstacles, debates with stakeholders, and meticulous planning have tested the resolve of all involved. Yet, through perseverance and collaboration, this ambitious vision has become a reality, joyful by investments, governmental support, and the collective dedication of its creators. As the Ark Encounter continues to captivate hearts and minds, its impact is far beyond the confines of its walls. And amidst the open-out story of discovery and wonder, a new revelation appears on the horizon near Mount Ararat, poised to challenge age-old beliefs and ignite fresh curiosity. But have you ever wondered what the door to this legendary Ark looks like? Apparently, it's called the Door of Salvation. The Door of Salvation at the heart of the Ark's wonderful and inspiring architecture stood a solitary door, positioned strategically, most likely along its side. This door played a key role as the single point of entry and exit, serving as the gateway through which all the various occupants, Noah's family, animals of every kind and essential provisions, were ushered aboard. Once the bustling assembly found its place within the big vessel, this door was securely closed, sealing its occupants away from the approaching disaster. In the record of Noah's Ark, a captivating chapter opens out, the time of the Great Flood. This flood was no ordinary rainstorm. It was a great overflow of biblical proportions. For an amazing forty days and nights, rainwater from the heavens, with unyielding brutality, overpowering the entire earth. Even the giant top fell to the relentless onslaught, rendering the landscape unrecognizable, an ancient world submerged under a troubled sea. Amidst the chaos, Noah's Ark emerged as a shelter amidst the raging storms, a light of hope amidst the water depth. The massive vessel, housing Noah, his family, and pairs of every living creature, became a home of survival, moving up and down, swaying under the relentless assault of the floodwaters. Yet, within this floating boat, life continued to thrive, sustained by unwavering faith and divine providence. As the water was flowing, the ark rode the top of the flood, sailing through a world transformed into an aquatic home. For a staggering 150 days, the vessel drifted upon the vast expanse, a proof of human resilience and divine protection. And as the flood gradually moved back, leaving behind a world forever changed, the Ark came to rest upon the rugged top of the mountains of Ararat, now preserved as a symbol of hope and renewal. But the journey was far from over. In the aftermath of the flood, Noah and his companions awaited the gradual slowdown of the waters, a process that stretched over a year from the onset of the flood to the eventual evacuation from the Ark. It was a period of anticipation and patience, marked by the slow return to solid ground and the promise of a new beginning. As the tale of Noah's Ark continues to captivate hearts and minds, it rises above mere legend, expressing the enduring spirit of human resilience 
and the triumph of faith over adversity. And amidst the echoes of the ancient narrative, the lonely door of the Ark stands as a great symbol of hope, a way to salvation in the face of unimaginable challenges. But many more myths and mysteries continue to surround Noah's Ark, and experts continue on their relentless quest to unravel them. Myth, Mystery, and the Relentless Quest For centuries, the quest to uncover tangible evidence of Noah's Ark has captivated archaeologists, historians, and religious scholars alike. The enigmatic mountains of Ararat, with their towering peaks and rugged terrain, continue to guard the secrets of ancient times, drawing the curiosity of countless seekers. The timeless fascination with locating Noah's Ark has transcended generations, sparking numerous theories and embarking on countless expeditions. Adding an intriguing twist to this pursuit is the exploration of flood narratives found in various cultures, most notably the captivating epic of Gilgamesh. This ancient Mesopotamian tale, covered in ancient times, shares striking similarities with the biblical story of Noah. Within its verses, the character Utnapishtim is forewarned of a disastrous flood meant to wipe out humanity. Like Noah, he receives divine instructions to build a vessel, though Utnapishtim's ark is described as a massive cube with six decks. In a touching counterpart, both Utnapishtim and Noah release birds to measure the retreating floodwaters. While Utnapishtim sends out a dove, a swallow, and a black bird, Noah sends forth a dark bird followed by a dove. The return of these winged messengers bearing signs of dry land symbolizes hope and the possibility of new life. The combination of these narratives offers tantalizing clues about the potential resting places of these legendary vessels. The Epic of Gilgamesh suggests that Utnapishtim's Ark came to rest on the mountain of Nasser, possibly located in modern-day Iraq or Iran. Conversely, the Bible states that Noah's Ark settled on the mountains of Ararat in eastern Turkey. Mount Ararat, covered in its connection to the Ark story, has become an annual pilgrimage site for truth-seekers, drawing inspiration from both ancient legend and contemporary discoveries. Despite the lack of definitive evidence, the beauty of stumbling upon this iconic relic persists, driving adventurers and scientists to delve into the record of history. The quest for Noah's Ark transcends minimal exploration. It represents elements of faith, mythology, and archaeology, bridging the gap between ancient narratives and modern scientific inquiry. As the relentless search continues, the lines between myth and tangible history faded, revealing the secrets of ancient times. Various theories about the final resting place of the Ark have emerged, with Mount Nasir emerging as a captivating possibility alongside Mount Ararat, which remains the focal point of widespread attention. Excursions to these formidable mountains range from relaxed treks to carefully planned expeditions utilizing advanced technology for comprehensive scanning and surveying. Yet, despite the passion and dedication of these explorers, Conclusive evidence of the Ark's presence on Mount Ararat remains difficult to crack down. The challenges they face are formidable, from the harsh geographical landscape to unpredictable weather conditions and political complexities. Moreover, the relentless passage of time has likely subjected any surviving remnants of the Ark to the disorder of decay and natural processes. Nevertheless, the unbeatable spirit of exploration perseveres, reminding us that the quest for Noah's Ark is a journey through time, faith, and the enduring attention of the unknown. Ever heard of Mesha Mountain? Could it truly be the final resting place of Noah's Ark as many experts are already proclaiming? The Mesha Mountain, David Allen Deal proposes a fascinating alternative theory about the final destination of Noah's Ark, diverging from the commonly accepted narrative of Mount Ararat. According to Deal, he believes that the Ark came to rest on a mountain known as Mashu, or Mesha Mountain, located approximately 17 miles south of Mount Ararat. 
Drawing inspiration from ancient texts, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, and analyzing the linguistic clues found in the names of nearby places, he suggests that the Ark initially landed on a mountaintop of Mesha Mountain, towering 7,400 feet above sea level. In his twisted theory, he said that Noah and his family established the first settlement after the Great Flood, naming it Mesha Naksuan, using salvaged materials from the Ark. Over time, geological phenomena such as earthquakes and erosion caused the Ark to gradually descend the mountain, leaving behind visible traces along its path. His hypothesis looks into the demanding detail, proposing that the survivors used the remains of the Ark to construct their homes, utilizing its timber for construction and its tar as a waterproofing agent for their roofs. The names of surrounding sites, such as Mesha, meaning pulled out of water, and Naxwan, interpreted as Noah's Zion, appear to verify aspects of his theory, lending relief to the notion of the Ark's landing site. Additionally, the unique geological features of Mesha Mountain, particularly its twin peaks resembling a wall, known as the Wall of Heaven, mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh, further bolster his hypothesis as the potential initial resting place of Noah's Ark. His theory gains further support from his explorations of the area in 1996 and 1997, where he discovered ancient habitation sites and observed the geological formations that align with his proposed landing site. Furthermore, he examines ancient artworks and artifacts, particularly those image figures from the biblical Genesis narrative, including a woman named Nama, purportedly linked to the mountain where the Ark is believed to have landed. These findings suggest a possible connection between the ancient saga and the biblical story of Noah's Ark. While his theory presents a complicated narrative supported by detailed evidence and logical reasoning, it remains just one of many speculations regarding the final resting place of Noah's Ark. Scientists caution that further investigation and analysis are necessary before confirming the validity of such hypotheses. When unraveling mysteries from ancient times, especially those related with ancient legends and beliefs, thorough finding and careful examination are vital. Whispers from Mesha Mountain tantalize with promises of unveiling a forgotten tale concealed within the records of time. But how soon could modern science unravel the many myths that still surround the biblical flood of Noah's time? Decoding Ancient Flood Myths Through Modern Science in the lively decades of the 1970s and 1980s, fearless American explorer Ron Wyatt found himself drawn to a particular site. Entrusted with leading numerous expeditions using advanced metal detectors and ground-penetrating radio detectors, Wyatt and his dedicated team uncovered a series of mysterious artifacts hinting at the presence of buried man-made structures. Among the most interesting finds, were large stones near the site, with holes drilled into their tops, resembling those used in ancient shipbuilding. This discovery sparked speculation that the location could be the long-sought final resting place of Noah's Ark. The significance of these stones lay in their similarity to those historically used in ship construction, suggesting that the site might not be just a natural formation. As these stones seem to resemble parts of a boat designed to withstand rough seas like Noah's Ark, the convergence of modern technology and ancient stories breathed new life into the search for the difficult-to-find Ark. Archaeologists, theologians, and history buffs alike remained captivated by the Darupiner site, interested by the possibility that it held the key to one of history's greatest mysteries. Meanwhile, in the 1990s, Geologists William Ryan and Walter Pittman embarked on a quest to link the biblical tale of Noah's Ark with an ancient flood. Their attention turned to the Black Sea, a unique body of water hiding secrets waiting to be uncovered. Using cutting-edge oceanic technology, they discovered unconvincing evidence of significant and rapid changes in salt levels in the sedimentary layers of the seafloor. This transformation suggested a massive flood of rainwater into what was once a freshwater lake, causing it to become a sea. Ryan and Pittman carefully conducted their investigation, 
analyzing biological data to identify signs of hardware, remains discharge, and saltiness caused by seawater invasion. They used radiocarbon dating to determine the ages of organic remains found in the remains, such as shells, wood, and bones. Remains extracted from the seabed provided a chronological record of how the layers and composition of the basin had changed over thousands of years. Comparisons between these scientific findings and flood saga from various cultures revealed a remarkable connection. Ancient civilizations, including the Sumerians, Babylonians, Greeks, and Romans, all recounted stories of devastating floods, leading Ryan and Pitman to propose a scenario where rising waters breached a natural dam at the Bosporus Strait in Turkey. This breach, occurring as the last ice age ended and ice melted, resulted in a catastrophic flood as fresh water from the Mediterranean poured into the previously freshwater lake, causing it to expand by over 30%. This overflow flooded land and potentially forced ancient societies to migrate. Ryan and Pittman's study not only provided evidence of a massive flood, but also aligned seamlessly with the timelines of various ancient flood stories. This arrangement led some to speculate that this disastrous event could be the historical basis for the Noah's Ark story and other ancient stories, shedding new light on human history. There have also been reports that Noah's Ark sailed through the Black Sea. Could there be any truth to this? The Hidden Journey Beneath the Black Sea and Beyond In the home of underwater exploration, Recent studies have revealed more than just layers of remains. The depths of the Black Sea have unveiled remnants of ancient civilizations, including clear traces of buildings and tools, indicating that human life once flourished in areas now flooded below the sea's surface. This discovery has not only captured the interest of historians, archaeologists, and theologians, but has also sparked renewed fascination in the region's connection to ancient history. These scholars go beyond simply comparing old stories with geological evidence. They skillfully blend together the narratives, linking the submerged settlements in the Black Sea to potential historical significance. The Zagros Mountains, located in western Iran, eastern Iraq, and southern Turkey, have emerged as credible contenders for the Ark's final resting place. Unlike Mount Ararat, whose volcanic origin postdates the biblical flood, Geologists suggest that the Zagros Mountains are more likely candidates. These mountains stand closer to Mesopotamia, where Noah's family settled after the flood, according to Genesis 10 and 11. Additionally, their peaks exceed the specified height of 15 kilometers, lending faith to their suitability as potential landing sites. The Zagros Mountains are also more accessible compared to the icy and rocky summit of Mount Ararat making them a more practical area for exploration. Historical records and linguistic analyses have identified specific peaks in the Zagros range, such as Mount Judy or Queensland Urban Utilities in northern Iraq, Mount Pir Omar Gudin in southern Iraq, and Mount Lubar in southwestern Iran as potential landing sites for Noah's Ark. Another contender in this interesting quest is the Pamir Mountains, an expansive and rugged expanse in Central Asia, often referred to as the roof of the world due to its towering elevation. Biblical scholars and adventurous explorers speculate that the Pamir Mountains may be the actual landing site of Noah's Ark, as suggested in Genesis 8 verses 4. This theory proposes that during the flood, the Pamir Mountains could have been accessible by water, serving as a meeting point for several major mountain ranges. Over the ages, various civilizations and cultures, from the Sumerians and Babylonians to the Persians, Greeks, Mongols, and Turks, have settled in this region. The Pamir Mountains, with their diverse range of plant and animal life, further support the speculation that the Ark may have sheltered a variety of species or played a role in their evolution. Despite the challenges of locating Noah's Ark in the Pamir Mountains, enthusiasts remain steadfast in their belief that the Ark remains concealed beneath the ice, snow, rocks, or dirt. Despite doubts, a dedicated group of scholars persists in their quest, 
fueled by the conviction that the truth will eventually be revealed. They turn to modern tools and expertise with hope, confident that these resources will unlock the secrets hidden within the vast expanse of the Pamir Mountains. In the face of uncertainty, these determined scholars continue their pursuit, guided by the belief that the baffling depths of the Pamir Mountains hold the key to uncovering the magnificent Ark of Noah. And for the longest time, both Christians and Jews have argued about what version of the Ark's story is authentic. But for how much longer would this dispute continue? An eternal dispute. The tale of Noah's Ark is a story cherished by both Jewish and Christian traditions. Yet their interpretations and acceptance of its history and religious significance have often been divided. This difference has led to numerous discussions and occasional disputes between the two faiths. While early Jewish and Christian writers, such as Flavius Josephus, regarded the Ark as a historical reality, most modern scientists disagree with the notion of a global flood or the existence of the Ark. Instead, some historians propose that ancient floods in the Middle East, like those in the Persian Gulf or the Black Sea, may have inspired these ancient narratives. The discussion surrounding Noah's Ark is just a piece of a broader conversation about the delicate relationship between Judaism and Christianity. Scholars have engaged in intense debates regarding how the New Testament portrays Judaism, debating whether clear criticisms are essential in the texts or have been misinterpreted over time. Particularly controversial are the texts of Luke Acts, which, while not easily criticizing Judaism, present it in a complex and fine manner. Throughout the years, religious texts have been analyzed from various perspectives by different religious leaders, scholars, and followers, each offering their own interpretations shaped by personal beliefs, cultural backgrounds, and contemporary contexts. Consequently, interpretations of the story of Noah's Ark and its significance vary widely within and between Jewish and Christian communities. Researchers and historians delve into the past, seeking clues that either agree or challenge traditional understandings of these stories. As new discoveries are made and old assumptions are inspected, the dialogue between Judaism and Christianity concerning their shared yet distinct heritage makes progress, reflecting humanity's expansive quest for meaning, connection to the past, and comprehension of holy texts. Moreover, religious discussions also surround the concept of covenants in holy scriptures, which are interpreted differently in the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. This highlights the progress and delicate connection between these two religions over time, raising significant questions about the enduring nature of divine promises and their applicability to all people. These questions are complex and require a profound understanding of religious teachings, an awareness of historical contexts, and a willingness to consider diverse perspectives. Religious leaders, scholars, and believers invest considerable time studying, debating, and sometimes disputing these topics, examining ancient texts, comparing translations, and striving to comprehend the intentions and circumstances of the text's ancient authors. But one mystery has continued to elude archaeologists and scientists alike, and that's the mysterious secret of Ararat. The Secret of Ararat In 2003, a satellite image of a specific area sparked renewed curiosity in what is now famously known as the Ararat Departure, this aerial view revealed a long structure that looked remarkably similar to the legendary Noah's Ark. Despite the intriguing visual similarities, no mission has ventured to explore it further. It's essential to stress that while these captivating images are fascinating, they do not provide conclusive evidence of Noah's Ark remains on Mount Ararat. The objects captured in the pictures may simply be natural rock formations, introducing uncertainty that has discouraged further investigation by ark seekers. In April 2010, an evangelical Christian exploration team associated with Noah's Ark Ministries International claimed to have discovered evidence of Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat. They reported their findings from an expedition conducted two years earlier, located in a prominent valley on the mountain's south face. 
While this expedition generated excitement, the scientific community approached these claims cautiously. However, archaeologists believe they may have identified the real Noah's Ark. A team of scholars from Turkish and American universities dedicated nearly a year to exhaustively examining the rock and soil composition of the famous Durupinar Formation on Mount Ararat, Turkey's highest mountain. Their exclusive focus was on carefully examining the potential remnants of the legendary Noah's Ark. Recent investigations by these scholars suggest shaky evidence of human habitation near the distinctive boat-shaped site nestled amidst the mountains. This aligns with a timeline ranging from 5500 to 3000 BC. Professor Farouk Kaya, the vice rector at AICU, highlighted the significance of their findings, emphasizing the analysis of rocks and soil from this distinct area on the mountain as indicative of human activity during the period following Noah's Ark flood. Although the discovery of human activity near the Durupinar formation is intriguing, it doesn't provide definitive proof of the biblical account. Over the years, this geological site has been proposed as a potential resting place for Noah's Ark, capturing significant attention from those eager to unravel the mysteries of the ancient tale. Archaeologists consistently assert that the formation is naturally occurring and not a drained shipwreck. They dismiss geological indicators of a global flood as described in religious scriptures, with the possibility of a more localized flood being a subject of debate but lacking collective support. The researchers acknowledge the current limitations in declaring the Darupinar site as the exact location of Noah's Ark. Additional fascinating details include the ongoing debate surrounding the size and construction of Noah's Ark. While the Bible provides dimensions, interpretations vary widely, with some proposing massive vessels capable of housing thousands of animals and others suggesting more modest crafts. Furthermore, the search for Noah's Ark has inspired numerous operations and charged the imagination of adventurers and explorers for centuries, with stories of discovery and disappointment twisted in the record of history. Despite the challenges and uncertainties, the quest to uncover the truth behind Noah's Ark continues to captivate the minds of people worldwide, reflecting humanity's enduring fascination with ancient mysteries and religious narratives. And with science and religion frequently colliding with every uncovered mystery, many are beginning to wonder if there'll ever be a time where both concepts converge. Scientific Doubt and Religious Certainty Amid the ongoing debate surrounding the alleged discovery of Noah's Ark by a Chinese team, American scientists are challenging the validity of the findings. They argue that the wood samples examined are not old enough to definitively confirm them as remnants of the ancient Ark. However, the Chinese team remains steadfast in their assertion, expressing 99% certainty that the discovered structure is indeed the very Ark built by Noah under God's command approximately 48,000 years ago. They describe the Ark as having three floors, spacious rooms, and sturdy wooden pillars. Despite widespread discussions and investigations into its authenticity, doubts linger. Arab newspapers have also delved into the historical and religious significance of this purported discovery. Both the Chinese and Turkish Christian teams have not only analyzed physical evidence, but have also explored verses from the Holy Quran that describe the journey of the Ark. These verses have guided their research efforts towards Mount Ararat over the past two decades. During a press conference, Chinese expert Dean Chen shared their findings, revealing details about the interior of the Ark, which featured rooms as high as 5 meters, providing ample space for animals. Utilizing radiocarbon dating technology, they estimated the age of the Ark to be 4 to 800 years. However, the contents of the discovered boxes within the ship remain a mystery, as the experts were unable to open them during their initial research. The claim of discovering Noah's Ark is not a recent one, as historical accounts trace it back to World War II. A British soldier named Leonard, driven by his passion for history and archaeology, collected various artifacts in Iraq, including a tablet inscribed with ancient Assyrian language. British archaeologist Irving Finkel examined the tablet and made a remarkable discovery. 
The tablet recounted a story of human sinfulness, God's wrath, and a righteous man named Noah residing in the Tigris and Euphrates Valley. According to the tablet, God instructed Noah to construct an ark large enough to accommodate righteous individuals and pairs of every living creature. It clearly described the ark's dimensions, likening its size to that of a football stadium. Estimated to be around 4,000 years old, the tablet provides historical evidence that goes with religious narratives. Despite skepticism from some quarters, historical artifacts like this tablet challenge the dismissal of such stories as ordinary stories. Interestingly, the tablet notes that Noah's Ark was not stretched out but egg-shaped, a design commonly seen in ships of Noah's time on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Surah Hud, verse 44 in the Holy Quran, suggests that Noah's Ark came to rest on a high mountain, specifically Mount Judy. Iraqi and Syrian inhabitants during the Babylonian period believed Mount Judy, near the island of Ibn Omar, to be the landing site of Noah's Ark. Muslim historians agree with this belief, while Christian missionaries argue that the ship landed on Mount Ararat, located on the border of Armenia and Turkey. Which of these discoveries inside Noah's Ark in Turkey scares the whole world the most? Share your thoughts and comments below.